Good afternoon and welcome to another Trip Scott webcast. And I'm Ed Pozzuoli, President of Trip Scott. And with us is our longtime friend, State Senator Ellen Bogdanoff. Ellen, welcome to Trip Scott. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I just wanted to start and congratulate you on another great session. And please share with us some of the, you know, you've been known as a pro business. Uh, legislator, share with us some of the accomplishments in that area for us. Well, um, the I spent, as you know, six years in the Florida House and recently moved to the Florida Senate and was the finance and tax chair in the Florida House the last two years, and they asked me to continue that role in the Florida Senate. So I had the privilege of running the jobs package, right. uh, which put hundreds of million dollars into the economy to produce jobs. So we're starting to see the fruits of that labor, and that ultimately uh, 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 because of that and other things that I had done, I became the uh, most valuable player for the 2011 uh, Florida Chamber of Commerce, which was quite, quite a compliment. That was that was nice. Um, but uh, there have been a lot of other things that I worked on. I did the unemployment compensation right. bill. Uh, right. That was a priority of the governor uh, to help reduce the unemployment costs um, across the board, which was huge. And then a lot of the other smaller business issues that were sp industry specific that just to kind of clean up things and uh, met with the bankers today, as a matter of fact, and we did some stuff, um, you know, for the for the trusts. Uh, and those those are the important things that help continue to allow business to do their thing with less regulation, you know, smoother so that hopefully they can put more money into infrastructure so that they can produce jobs. So the idea in Florida is to have a stable, growing business community. Well, of course you want that. You want to keep the taxes down, but you also want to reduce as much regulation as you can. So I've spent a tremendous amount of my career trying to reduce duplication and regulation in government. So that's always going to be a struggle because there's oh, every time you do it, there's always going to be more to be done. <laughs> right. There's always more to be done. You've got to pull all those regulations right. away. Another passion of yours, education. Yeah. Now, you, you were uh, you know the author and, and sponsor of the anti-bullying bill. Talk yes. about that a little bit. Well, we did. We worked on that for several years, um, and that was uh, became a model for the nation. Uh, there's a website called Bully Police USA, and it wrote it wrote it was written up as the best bill in the nation. And actually, a lot of other states have have mimicked what we've done. So we're pretty proud of that. But there's always more to do. I continue to get calls on a daily basis from parents who are concerned about their kids. And it's you know you can pass all of the great laws, but you have to make sure that everything is implemented and that people are actually doing what we ask them to do. So we have to, we, we've come back every year and we've done a little bit more to put some teeth into it to make sure that our kids are protected. And it protects all kids equally. And it doesn't focus on the victim. What it does is it focuses on the behavior of the bully. There's no, the, the bully will ultimately bully anybody that they, they can. So it, it really does make sure that the, the bully is, is addressed and that the parents are assured of the victim that their child is being taken care of and protected. And so you're also trying to break thing. the cycle of, of the continuation. Yes, because we find that a lot of our bull bullies will end up in the juvenile justice system and ultimately into the adult prison system. So if you don't address that issue up front uh, and make sure that the child that they're victimizing is protected, but also address the issues that are creating the bullying behavior. Now, that's a good segue because as a practicing lawyer, you've been involved with reforming criminal justice. And so talk a little bit about that. Well, the second half of uh, my Senate uh, two years, I was asked to take on the civil and criminal justice approach. So it gave me um, entree into something that I've been working on since I got into the legislature, and it started when I was in law school with the Innocence Project, and that is reforming criminal justice. When we have uh, a bad economy and we're looking for dollars, what we have to look for is where are we wasting money? And a big part of where we're wasting money is in our criminal justice system, and that's because there is a huge national movement that Florida is yet to jump on the bandwagon, and that is called Right on Crime. And and it treats non, non the biggest part of it is nonviolent drug offenders uh, to move them from incarceration to rehabilitation and community-based care. And it is the nonviolent. And to do that would save hundreds of millions of dollars that we could put back into education, we could back, put back into economic development, put back into the court system. Right. Uh, so those are the important things. And we actually did pass the drug reentry bill. Uh, this year. It took us six years to do it. It was a great piece of legislation applauded by uh, the Democrats, the Republicans, everybody. And unfortunately, um, the governor did veto it. So we're working with the governor to get him to better understand what we're trying to accomplish. So we'll get it next time. That's the hope. Okay. Uh, let me switch gears a little bit. Um, because of redistricting, some of your district has changed. So describe for us where your district now runs from and to. 
It's changed uh, quite a bit. Um, I used to go from 17th Street, uh, virtually all east of US-1, all the way up the coast to northern Palm Beach County, which was Juneau Beach. And now? What they did is they moved it south. So the high, highest point is Boynton Beach, which, which is Hypoluxa Road. Uh, Broward County's pretty much remained the same. It's virtually all east of Dixie and US-1. And then when we get to Boca, we go all the way to the Turnpike. When we get to Delray Beach, we go to Jog Road. And when we get to Boynton Beach, we go to Military Trail. It's a little bit like a, a, a set of stairs. Um, so it's changed, the, demogra the demographics have changed as well. Um, so it's just going to be a little bit more challenging, but uh, we're doing very well and we're plugging away every day. Good. And so if someone wanted to get involved in your campaign, how could they do that? They could call me. Uh, our website is um, ellenbogdanoff.com. Our numbers are there. Um, but most people, I would say in Broward community, know how to reach me. They've got right. my cell phone number. <laughs> right. They do. They do. They do. And so what do you think the election is going to come down to? Turnout. Turning out your voters. And what other issues? Well, I think that, you know, anytime you have a national election, the, 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 what plays at the national level definitely impacts other races. Um, so we are working very hard to get people to break through the noise and to get people to know our campaign. Uh, we're doing very well in the district that I currently represent, which is 60% of the new district. So we're just spending a tremendous amount of time introducing ourselves uh, to, to the new part of the district. Uh, and hopefully that regardless of what people do, you know, in other elections, that they recognize the work that I've done, my legislative record, and um, want to give me an opportunity to go back and do some more. Now, for our uh, listening and viewing audience, Republicans control the Florida Senate now. They do, and the Florida House and the governor. And the governor. And, and, and in the Florida Senate, being on the side of the majority, what does that mean? Well, I think that we have an interesting problem here in Broward County, as in Palm Beach County. Um, this would be the only Republican, potential Republican Senate seat. Um, now, what that means is that if the Republicans lose this seat, that two of the largest counties in the entire state will not have Republican majority representation in the Senate. And I don't know that that bodes well for our community, because as we know, in, in, any, in any political game, uh, those that are in the, 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 the controlling party are the ones that... Um, Control the agenda. The agenda and what, what needs to be done, you know, in, in terms of bringing staff back to the community. Um, I have done, uh, for the last six years, I've always worked with my Democratic colleagues and assisting them and trying to pass their priorities if it's good for our community. So um, I hope to have the opportunity to continue to do that. But I don't, um, I, I, I am concerned, apart from the fact that I'm running for office, uh, that Broward and Palm Beach County continue to have Republican representation in the Florida Senate. So for that reason alone? Well, that would be a good reason. But among I, among I, all the other I, reasons. I, I'm hoping it's because of my legislative record and, <laughs> and everything that I've done. But yeah, I think, it's, I think it's important for Broward. And your commitment to the community. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. And Ellen Bogdanoff, thank you very much. And best of luck to you in the election. Thank you. Thank you.